It's time to predict the championship. Who would do that? Us. That's who. And it's time for game week 12. And with me to, well, look like a bit of an idiot, it's my co-host, Mark Ryman. How are we getting on, Mark? I like looking like a bit of an idiot. That's that's my go-to personality persona. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, comfortable territory for me, mate. Yeah, how are you? Perfect, yeah. I'm, I'm always comfortable looking like an idiot as well. So I think we're made for each other. We're, we're made for this as well. Uh, yeah, bring it on the next round of uh, getting it wrong. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just, it's impossible. Like, just when you think you have a team nailed down, they just, they turn a corner out of nowhere and yeah. they're flying out of nowhere. It's it's mental. It's crazy. But before we sink our teeth into these championship predictions, while you're watching this on YouTube, why not like the video and subscribe to our channel? Because we do this every week and we have a round table discussion, rounding up all the championship news as well. Each game week that we do live from a pub, it's a lot of fun. Go check it out. It's called Champ Chat. Right, so... First game up on the slate is Portsmouth versus Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah, I got this one um, as, as a relatively tough one to call. Um, Sheffield Wednesday did quite well, I think, at home to to keep Swansea at bay um, on a nil nil. Um, Portsmouth is struggling and losing two nil um, against Cardiff. I said in the previous one uh, they can't believe their bad luck having to play Cardiff after their. Their, their absolute thumping uh, of Plymouth the previous week and it turned out that way um, and they, they were comfortably beaten I think they might lose again I've got it tight but I've got Sheffield Wednesday 2-1 I, I really like both of the managers actually I think John Massimo, uh despite some of their results has, has done well with a, a relatively limited squad um, and you know we, we made our feelings clear on Danny Roll I still don't think Sheffield Wednesday have quite clicked yet um, but they're showing promise in bits of games. I think they just need to put it together for a 90. So, yeah, 2-1 Sheffield Wednesday for me. So, funnily enough, I think that was the only score I got wrong, Swansea, Sheffield Wednesday. I called a nil-nil, and it happens. Uh, I, I think Portsmouth are kind of in a false position at the moment. I, I quite like them. And, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of John Messino as well. I've gone 1-1 for this one. Um I don't think Portsmouth quite had the firepower to break through Sheffield Wednesday, but likewise, you know, uh, can Sheffield Wednesday take all their chances? We saw in, I think it was their loss to Burnley, and what is it, um, Michael Smith, I think their striker, he, he missed like quite a sitter, like, is he prolific enough? No, nah, well, maybe they'll, they'll sneak a goal here, but I think both teams yeah. will get a goal, so I'm going 1-1. Right. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be tight, isn't it? Um, yeah, but yeah, both both doing okay. Yeah, you know, um, well, Portsmouth doing okay. You know, rock bottom at the moment. Although it's not really rock bottom because it's so no. tight and congested, sort of in the bottom half at the moment. But I, I do think, as I said, I think it's a false position because I think their performances are much better than twenty yeah. fourth. Yeah, it's mad how tight it is down there. I mean, all the way up. And and it, it always is in the championship. I know it's still early days. But yeah, a couple of wins and they'll be right up the table. Yeah, uh, it's um, four points separating 17th and 24th at the moment. Really tight. Really, really tight. And on to Bristol City versus Leeds. Bristol City did brilliantly, didn't they? To get a point against Stoke after being 2-0 down so early on in that game. Um and actually, I, I half thought they might nick it as well. Um, yeah, the last two games, they showed a tremendous amount of fight. Very different games, very different ways. And for that reason, at home at Ashton Gate, I've got this as a 1-1. Now, I think Leeds flattered to deceive a bit during the week as well. They were 2-0 up after about 15, 20 minutes against Watford. Well done, Daniel Backman. Um, and <laughs> didn't take advantage of it. Um allowed Watford back in the game really um, and and Watford could probably consider themselves unlucky not to get a point out of it really so based on that despite the results I'm, I've got this as 1-1 I think Bristol City are going to give them a right game yeah I, I feel Bristol City they're kind of doing it for Liam Manning at the moment yeah. uh, and that that team spirit is absolutely sensational I love to see that because it just shows 
football is a power that can, um, you know, can help others. And I'm sure Liam is, you know, is sort of not taking his mind off it, but it's helping um, a little bit, you know, that, that his team are pulling for him and doing it for him. Um, and that, you know, that was encapsulated by their comeback. Amazing to come from two goals down. Yeah. Fair play. But that, that's an incredible grit, incredible fight. Um, but for this one, yeah, Leeds, it depends. I, I've I've gone for a 2-1 Leeds away win here. It depends if Leeds take the handbrake off. I, I feel like they are just playing with the handbrake on. They don't go for the jugular all the time. But I guess we'll see. Uh, and I, I think Bristol City could be quite stubborn in this game. But mm. it, it depends if Leeds really do turn up and go for it because, you know, it's a proper ding-dong at the top of the table. And, you know, there are... Sunderland are the early pace setters here. And if Leeds want to sort of stamp their authority on this league, which they really should do as an absolute powerhouse in this division, mm. it, it's it's time to, you know, take off the shackles and, and put games to bed, you know, score the four or five goals that we keep predicting them to score. Yeah, uh, uh, they're missing Ethan Ampadu, aren't they? Um, yeah, but Tanake is, is a hell of a player. Oh, of course. You know, they, they've got players in depth. Of course they are. I just I just don't know whether it's the control that, that Ampadu has, has given them. And, and you can tell that he's he's missing from the start of the season and, and how dominant they were in games. Even if they they weren't always blowing teams away, they just, the less the less of that control teams are getting in and behind them a little bit more now um maybe i'm oversimplifying it but it feels as if there's a a link between that and his injury yeah well you know he's a very very good player at this level yeah. there's no getting around that and it's obviously a huge loss and uh, isn't he coming back around christmas or, or slated to come I, back I, around christmas yeah i think they said at christmas new year's is when he got injured. I haven't seen any updates since then. That's not so bad. That's, you know, when I heard major injury, I was expecting, like, he's done for the season. That Then I'd be like, wow, that's that's a big blow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they can still get results, as you say. They've got the depth in squad, and going forwards, they are absolutely lethal on their game. Um, too mm. right. But, yeah, it's it's just the relentless nature of the championship. You need those sort of players, a bit like us at Luton, need need players like Marvellous and Camber. It's a, it's a similar situation, I guess. Well, perfect timing to come on to our yep. next fixture, which is Coventry City versus Luton Town. Yeah, so... Um, Cov got a draw against QPR. Um, well, they, they, they were they were leading. Yeah, weren't they? They were. <laughs> yeah, they were. They were leading. I'm trying to be positive because <laughs> there's not so many, but they got a draw. Um, mm. I don't know whether either well done, Cov, getting that. the draw. Yeah. I mean, yeah. look, we're, I'm not going to judge anyone based on their results against QPR. We're in no position as Luton fans, sure. really. So I'm not saying any more than that. Um, yeah, we know the situation with them. That despite their their team and manager, they, they've just not been putting it together and, and look very vulnerable at the back as well um, against teams. All teams seem to be seem to be running through them. Um, Luton, on the other hand, I do really feel like we've turned a corner. Um, despite some of the... Uh, commentary online, um, Luton's performance against Sunderland was absolutely excellent. Um, and it wasn't just one-dimensional either. Um, certainly, we didn't allow Sunderland to play as they wanted to. Um, so, sorry, Sunderland fans, that we didn't just allow you the freedom of the midfield to run through us. Um, I know you would have preferred that. It wouldn't have really helped us, though. Um, I think despite um, those two goals, I think Luton really have shown a bit more of what we were about two years ago. Um, and I, I I take a lot of positivity going into to Coventry. Different game, obviously. I think Coventry and Luton, of course, their memories. The last the last game that we played is going to be is going to be on everybody's mind, isn't it? And um, yeah, both teams are going to see this as a really big fixture to try and propel themselves up the table. Um, I've got Luton to win it three um, one. I think the goals will come. Um, if we carry on playing the way that, that, that we are in terms of Luton, Coventry, despite a, a point, um, they still look very vulnerable at the back. Um, 
and I'm not sure they know their best system or, or even team and we're what 10 11 games into the season um so yeah what uh Luton Town 3 Coventry 1 on this one yeah you're going for goals there wow I am um who would have thought that the 22-23 playoff finalists would be 19th oh, no. and 22nd in the championship in the 24-25 season that is mad what a difference two years makes um although I believe they're both false positions although the, the table doesn't lie. No. Um, I know that's a cliche, but y- your position in the table it reflects like your performances so far this season. And both teams have, quite frankly, been absolutely stinky so far this season. Um, Luton, as you say, have turned a corner. That is reflected in the performance against Sunderland. And um, I feel if we take that performance and we continue it that that was my biggest fear going into Sunderland we'll talk about this more like in the in the Coventry match preview that's also going to be on our channel check it out remember like and subscribe for even more Luton Town content as well because you know we do a lot of Luton Town stuff um my, my feeling is that that the corner has been turned and I was worried that Luton wouldn't take the Watford performance into Sunderland. We did yeah. very unlucky. Sunderland defended well, but mm. you know, I've got a two nil Luton win here. Cause I just feel Coventry, they are still in the process of fine tuning and turning things, uh, you know, moving things all over the pitch. You know, um, th- that, that fellow whose name I can't even pronounce. La bit to the, the, uh, uh, <laughs> Latibodia, I can't pronounce That's the one. It. I'm pretty yeah, sure the close. second time you said it was close, anyway. <laughs> hey. I'm yeah, not going to try. They've, <laughs> they've, they've tried him at left wing. They've tried him yeah. at left back. They've tried him left yeah. centre back. They're, they're literally moving players mm. all over the pitch, trying to fit people in. And then against QPR, they started with Sims, Haji Wright and Sakamoto up top together. Whereas Sakamoto and Haji Wright have both been on the bench like for the previous game. So that they're sort of... You know, Robbins is trying to find that formula that works. And I feel we could see another completely changed Cov lineup yet again. Um, So, yeah, I'm I'm backing Luton for this one. And that's not just my rose-tinted specs. You know, I I genuinely think we've turned a corner. Coventry haven't yet. Um, And I, I worry about Mark Robbins and the reaction that could happen at the CBS if, uh, if that is indeed the case. Yeah, it's not going to be it's not going to be easy for him if that happens. Um, if they if they go behind relatively early on, definitely. Yeah, right on to Watford versus Blackburn Rovers, and this is Watford at home, so you yeah. can predict a win if you want to. Well, I have um, oh. going against character, but I have both teams brilliant at home. Um, and actually, I th- as, as I alluded to earlier with the Leeds prediction, I think actually Watford can probably consider themselves quite unlucky to lose the game against Leeds. Um, I think you predicted a 4-0 loss. I predicted a 2-0 loss. Um, and I don't me- think many Watford fans would have seen them getting anything from, from Ellen Road uh, uh, on on a Tuesday. And, and you know, they, they did do well. Backman is, is solely really responsible for the, that defeat, as he came out and said after the game. Uh, Blackburn, on the other hand... Um, again, did well at home, Drew. Uh, good home form. But I think at home, I just fancy Watford to edge it 2-1. Yeah, you're right there because um, both teams have exceptional home form. Both teams have really bad away form. So on the home form table, Blackburn are top of the home form table. Yet to lose at home. Watford mm. fourth. And then when you look at the away form, um, Watford are 19th, Blackburn are 17th so uh, <laughs> you know i honestly don't know where to go with this one um like it, it just seems too easy to predict a watford win so i've gone 1-1 because i think blackburn have goals in their team <laughs> it's too logical damn it so I'm yeah go ah, the logic, the logic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm backing blackburn to get a point here yeah fair enough yeah, I guess we'll see what happens. Right, on to Burnley, who are flying, versus QPR, who are not great. Not? <laughs> <laughs> not flying? Hey, they got a point. Um, 
at home, so there's something. Uh, I don't know about you, but I can't see past Burnley for this one. I've said that a lot already this season, but you just, you know, Burnley have just know how to manage games in the championship. And, oh, God, I'm going to have to, um, you know, sort of half apologise to Scott Parker on this because, you know, I think that, I think fairly a lot of people have, have questioned how good he actually is considering the teams that he's managed. I don't mind that. And you could argue that he's he's not, you know, absolutely dominated the championship with teams that could and should have done. But with the Burnley side that were all over the place, lost a style of football in Vincent Company, had about 40 players in their squad. I think he's he's managed games of football and this league so far very, very well. Yes, he's got great players at his disposal, but, you know, he has to take some credit. They did get a draw um, against Hull. Um, you know, so I suppose it could have been slightly better, but I fancy them to win this comfortably. I've got 2-0 Burnley at home against QPR. I've gone a bit tighter. I've gone Burnley 2, QPR 1. And, it, you know, I, I feel just like Leeds. Burnley haven't really taken the handbrake off. Um, but they're doing the most important thing. They've conceded the fewest goals in the league. Um, only five goals in 11 games. So they are tough to score against. But I've still, I still think QPR could nab a goal. But, hey, it's impossible to predict. I've gone Burnley 2, QPR 1. And, you know, based on the fact that QPR are fighting for their lives right now. Um, but right now, when they need points, Burnley is not the team you want to play, especially not no. a turf more. No, no, it's not. I suppose the only thing to say is that, that you know they will be underdogs and they'll feel that they have got less to lose um, than they will do against some of the teams around them, let's say. So there is that, I suppose, in their favour. Yeah, it, it'll be an interesting one either way because Burnley are just desperately trying to catch Sunderland and also keep West Brom, Sheffield United, all the chasing pack, early doors, you know, sort of at arm's length. Uh, arm's length? Arm's length. Oh, wow. I'm struggling to it's talk. It's during the day. Ollie has not been <laughs> drinking, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when my post matches, people accuse me of drinking. Uh, obviously, I have been drinking. I've been at football. Ob obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, right, on to Derby versus Hull. Where are you at for this one? I've got a home win on the basis, similar basis of the Watford game. Derby are great at home. Hull don't travel quite as well. Um, Derby got a draw away from home against Oxford. I think that was a really good result for them. Um, and also a really good result for Hull, as we just talked about as well. Um, but at home at Pride Park, I think Derby are a different animal and they're a good side. Um, you know, again, another manager that I probably have to... Um, I have to uh, apologise to as Paul Warner. I mean, I, I really didn't think that Derby would be doing as well as they are. Um, I had them, I think, in my original table, I had them just above the, the dotted line, um, I think. Um, but they, they've they've been really good at home and solid home form keeps you in the league. So um, for that reason, yeah, 2-1. I still think Hull need to find a system or a form of playing that, that really works. I still don't think they're making the most of their their attacking talent and qualities. They've had two very tough games, having said that, you know, um, in a row and, and, and have done okay in, in both. They just lost to Sunderland, arguably um, should never have been allowed because of the, the foul going the other way or the, the referee getting in the way, rather, um, and, and did well to get a draw against Burnley. So, yeah, just to lose this one based on home form. 2-1 Derby. So it's an interesting one, actually. You mentioned Hull not travelling too well. So I I had to have a look at it. And Hull were actually sixth in the away table, which surprised me because oh, okay. you always... Yeah, you don't, you don't think that they do travel well because they, they mm. look like they've struggled with results and points. But you know what? If you look at sixth in the home table there's Derby County. So I've got Derby County one Hull nil. And I just think regardless of how Hull travel, I do think coming up against a team that is good at home, it's like running into a brick wall. It's, it's tough. Pride Park will be incredibly almost mm. called it base. Uh, the, the baseball ground. The baseball ground. Uh, <laughs> showing your age Pride, there. <laughs> Pride Park will be, very intimidating and yeah. 
Derby at home, they're flying. You know, with home fans, all they see are they've only lost once at home this season. It's mad, you know. Played five, won four, lost once, haven't drawn. Um, so I think regardless of Hull's away form, I think it's still going to be really tough. But I, I do think, like, just having a look at this, yeah, it, it looks like um, away form, other than Sunderland, who are doing very well away from home, teams away form have been really poor this year. So sort mm -hmm. of being sixth in the table for away form is like trying to think uh, of a politically correct way of saying it. It's... Um, no, I'll, I'll tell you what just camera don't. afterwards. Yeah, I yeah just, you tell I me that. I, yeah, 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 I, yeah. I think for me, probably it's recency bias. I think in, in my head is still the Norwich City game. So maybe that's why. Yeah, what well, is like about their away the last the three sense, games, two losses, one draw. So you're not mm. wrong. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's their um, early season away form that, that has them up there. Right. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, so it's not the end of the world. Um, right. On to Plymouth Argyle versus Preston North End. Well, Preston, I thought we were going to beat Norwich at one point. Um, they were 2 0 up in that game, weren't they? They were 2 0 up. Norwich got it down to 2 2. Yeah, I thought as much. Um, after we'd said, uh, I think I think one of us made it that uh, our lock of the week. Was it you? I think it was you that might have made it your lock of the week. You can please correct me if I'm wrong. Whoopsie. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you were nearly almost proved right, despite them being two 0 up. But yeah, I mean, Preston, Preston at home have been have been good. I I said they were solid. I just didn't think they were as good as Norwich. Um, I've got a one one draw here, and again, there's not a huge amount of logic because Plymouth have not been doing very well the last couple of games. They lost to Millwall by the odd goal. Oh, it was quite tight, but you'd argue Millwall did deserve to win the game. Um, and obviously, the game before they got absolutely hammered by Cardiff. I still think there's something in the way that they play. Um, and I think at home, um, I think they can get something from the game. Preston have been, um, yeah, good in, in parts of games and, and did very well to be 2-0 up against a, a rampant Norwich City team or have been over recent weeks. Yeah, 1-1 one, one I've got for this one. It's going to be tight, I think. Yeah, so I've gone... A Plymouth home win mainly because I've gone one nil Plymouth back-to-back -back losses one of them being incredibly heavy that Cardiff result that <laughs> you know Cardiff are just flying now um well flying as high as 20th but what a turnaround from Omar Rizza um and Preston uh, I've had a lot of Preston fans in the comments who said oh no we're actually really solid we're, you know we are we are really solid and I have to admit, you know, Woodman is very good in goal. Liam Lindsay plays out of his skin. We saw that earlier against, uh, you know, against Luton when Preston were trying to defend their 1-0 lead. And, you know, they are all right. They, they haven't lost in four, but runs do come to an end. And at the same time, I think Plymouth's losing run will come to an end. Um, home park, it's a tough place to go. And it's, uh, it's a long old journey for old Preston, isn't it, down my geography is pretty bad, but that's no, that is a long way. That's long, that is isn't it? It's long, one of the longest. Long that has yeah. got to be that one of, if not the longest trip. I guess maybe Borough to Plymouth is probably, or Sunderland. Sorry, Sunderland's further north, isn't it? So yeah, Sunderland mm -hmm. to to Plymouth will be the longest one of the lot. But it's up there. It's a long old trip for those fans. Fair play to anyone going. And and during a pack schedule as well, I, yeah. you know the players have to then pack into a coach. And I don't think this is like Premier League where they're they're flying all over the place. They'll, they'll be taking the train or or or, or, or a coach. <laughs> <laughs> Can't imagine yeah. being on a coach for like. They'll be hours. on the National Express, mate. They won't be on the plane. <laughs> this is a championship. Yeah. It's Peter Risdale trying to save some money, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Quite. yeah, yeah. Doesn't want to live the dream anymore. Um, yeah, so I've gone Plymouth 1, Preston 0. Um, right, on to Sheffield United versus Stoke. Uh, Sheffield United have had a little bit of a wobble, haven't they? It's, uh, <laughs> you know why that is, don't you? It, you it's know because why I that predict, is. I know why. It's because I, for I, I know, I've been bigging them up. I made a whole video talking about yeah. why Sheffield United will walk the league and then they lose back-to-back -back games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is, to be fair, those back-to-back -back games are tough. I mean, you know, Leeds and, um, and and Borough. But yeah, you're right. 
Uh, yeah, so I've gone Sheffield United 2, Stoke City 0. I think Stoke, despite being 2-0 up, are, are going to feel slightly um, um, slightly down after or deflated after it, only getting a draw from that game. Sheffield United lost against Borough, who Latte Leth finally took a chance, which is sort of good to see from a neutral <laughs> point of view. Um, don't want to be playing him anytime soon. You just know he's going to start. This happened last season as well, though, didn't it, with Latte Leth? He didn't score... Rages and then just bang, 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 bang. I'm scared that's going to happen again. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that when, when uh, Luton play Borough soon. Um, but I think that at home, Sheffield United, as, as you've mentioned, with their defence as well, are a very, very difficult team um, to play against. Wilder will have them set up really, really solidly. Um, and I also see them getting through Stoke. Most teams score against Stoke. Um and I don't, I don't, I, but genuinely don't mean that in a completely derogatory way at all. Stoke, Stoke don't have a hugely um, good defensive record, so I think for that reason, Sheffield United are going to win two 0 Interesting. I've gone a, a scooch tighter. I've gone Sheffield mm. United one, Stoke nil, and I do think it is going to be a case of Sheffield United and Chris Wilder going back to basics you know going back to what sort of works uh, i think they did that for borough as well but harry Suter and ahmed hodzic like up there with the best center-back pairing fantastic and then even the you know the whole back line michael cooper they're, they're fantastic so i think they just need a one nil win and a clean sheet to sort of you know re-up that mojo um because yeah like Burnley and Leeds are sort of just getting away slowly. Um, yeah, so I, I, I don't I don't see Stoke getting anything out of this game. I just don't. Um, they, they, they've been solid enough, you know. They haven't lost in four games. No, they've been positive, um, You know, a win and three draws on the trot. But Sheffield United, Bramall Lane, it's it's tough. It, it's It's a really tough task. To go there and try and nick a win, nick a point. It's just tough. Yeah. Yeah, really tough. <laughs> right, on to Sunderland versus Oxford. Um yeah. Oh Sunderland. Just um just a couple of things. I think <laughs> their finishing was fantastic. Um, it, re it reminded me a little bit more about when Luton were in the Premier League. Um, teams that just take every chance that they've got. Um, and, you know, Sunderland fans take the win. You've got a win. Congratulations. Well done. Fantastic finishing on your part. Some good last-ditch defending. We'll say no more on it. I think at home they will beat Oxford as well. Just. I think Oxford will fight. Um, and I know that... Um, that that will cause Sunderland some problems as well. But I think Sunderland at the Stadium Alight will win. So I've got 2-1 Sunderland for that one. Yeah, I echo that as well. Look, the, the defending from Sunderland, like I said in my post-match reaction, that Sunderland couldn't live with Luton's direct style. We, you know, I'm, I wasn't wrong, you know. Like, Sunderland weren't exactly play, zipping it out the back to try and progress the ball forward. Like, they were literally just lumping it forward that like hacking it away and i thought for the for the first six minutes which were you know Sunderland looked fantastic in those first six minutes i expected that throughout mm. the entire game and i, yeah. I was expecting a, a really long night but then it settled down and then the game was pretty much all looting other than yeah. two very very good um bits of attacking play that you know maybe a bit contentious but you know as i said no more about that um Sunderland are a good team they are. Um, do I think that they're going to romp to the title? No. No, they won't. Um, but I, I feel that they can do the dark side quite well, as shown that they can disrupt games. Um, can they live with direct style? You know, maybe not. Oxford are quite direct, and yeah. they're, they're a good team. Not the greatest away form. Um, <laughs> they're pretty much at the bottom of the table for away form. But yeah, um, I think Sunderland will be fine. One nil here to Sunderland, um, and if they can do more of that defending that we saw against Luton, because that's Luton of old, you know, uh, it's direct as possible, very 
aggressive in the challenge as well, then yeah, Sunderland will take it one goal to nil. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been tight though, hasn't it? The away form for Oxford. Um, They've been so unlucky. So yes, you're right. Their away form hasn't been as good as their home form, but it's not. It's been close, and I think as you as you predict as well. I think this one will be close too. Yeah, and on to Swansea versus Millwall. Uh, home win, um, and despite their differing results over the midweek, um, I think Millwall did well. Um, and and it was a battle of two styles of football that game, really, wasn't it? And and Millwall came out on top. They probably had the best chances in the game as well. They certainly did. Um, Swansea, I I still think um, look really promising. Yep, they 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 got a draw away um, at Hillsborough. I think at home though, I, I think they will they will they will win this game. I've gone two nil. Maybe that is slightly wider than it. It might be a bit tighter than that. But I've gone two nil Swansea. I keep backing Swansea as well. I've got, mm. I've gone Swansea one Millwall nil. And it's crazy because Swansea are the only team in the league not to hit double digits for goals scored. It's mad. Like, eight goals. Like, they're tight at the back, but they don't score. And, and I keep backing them because they, they got Ronald, they got Eon. They, they got such talent in the wide areas, and they've got a decent striker as well. But they, they're they just not scoring. I don't understand why they're not... Uh, I haven't watched all their games like meticulously. Like, are they not carving out the chances? Are they the anti Millsborough? I I honestly don't know at this point. Um, but yeah, I've gone Swansea one Millwall nil because I think Millwall, you know, they create a lot of chances through their direct play. But I yeah. think Swansea, they're good at the back. That you know, they they will be able to resist Millwall. But you know, watch this one be like Millwall grabbing the three points and like. Go, you know, blowing the back line apart and, you know, going back to Bermondsey. Who knows? Who knows indeed, yeah. Yeah, it's the championship. That's why we love it. It is. Right, on to your second favourite team. West Brom <laughs> versus Cardiff. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Is this really hard to predict this one? Um, <laughs> I mean, I've, I've gone for a West Brom win because at home at the Hawthorns against Cardiff, yeah. I find it really hard to back against West Brom. They've certainly struggled in the last few games. Um, last five games without a win. Yeah, it's been tough for them. It's been dry. <laughs> I mean, it's fair to say that a lot of those games have been draws. They've not. They lost a couple, but I think that you know, they're just they're not finding the net. They've just suddenly gone from being able to score quite freely to just yeah, none at all. Um, Cardiff, on the other hand, as, as we've already alluded to, of you know, what is it, seven goals in two games? So it's just, it's so hard to predict. But I, I would think you'd be brave to bet against West Brom at home, despite that, still. Um, but, you know, honestly, it, it could be any kind of scoreline, this. It really could. I've gone 2-1 West Brom on the principle that they do find scoring boots and they're at home. I think if this was switched around, it was at Cardiff, it would be a very different situation. But, yeah, 2-1 West Brom. I've gone 3-2 West Brom. And, yeah. look, West Brom, they are... I've been calling it the West Brom wobble, but it's become more of... <laughs> it's become quite a big wobble, really. So unstable yeah. on their feet right now. Um Two losses, three draws. Th- those three draws coming back to back in Cardiff, you know. Three three wins, one draw in their last four as well. And just brilliant. Looking really good. Like uh, anything they hit goes in the back of the net right now. It's it's mad. Absolutely mad. But as you say, going to the Hawthorns, it's tough. It's really tough. And this could be the turn for West Brom. Like now we see if Carlos Corberan still has that magic, you know, the ability to tactically make little changes to, to turn those draws into wins. And we'll see. You know they're going to turn it around because you know who they're playing next Friday. <laughs> oh, <gonna>. yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's part of it. You know they're going to start winning ways again the week before they play Luton. So <laughs> it's just it's just difficult. Yeah, we'll see if that West Brom wobble continues beyond this. Hopefully mm-hmm. Cardiff absolutely embarrass them. Sorry, West Brom fans watching. No, the Luton is leaking out right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's been evident from the start, I think. <laughs> right, on to the final game to preview. Norwich versus Middlesbrough. 
Oh, I've, I keep just going for home wins at the moment, and I've done it again despite their differing results during the week. Borough finally um, took a chance, which was <laughs> good for them. Um, and, you know, against a very good side as well. That was a great win for them, and, and maybe it helps to turn the corner a bit. And, and they're sort of, they're quite a streaky side under Carrick, aren't they? So as soon as the confidence gets into their front line, they're going to be a a, a really scary prospect for anybody. Um, Norwich came from behind, draw two two at home. Yeah, two one Norwich, just based on on home form, and I'm struggling to see past Norwich at the moment. I, I wouldn't say it's a, a wobble just yet, but we'll see how this game goes. But yeah, I, just just edging it two one. It's. It's really weird, isn't it? Because since we've been backing Norwich, that they've had that not wobble, as you said. Mm. Um, draws against Preston and Stoke, and well, when we've been saying, yeah, they'll score fours, fives, they <laughs> they just stop scoring. It's it's yeah. absolutely mad. Then they went, you know, down to Preston, and uh, had to fight back from that. It, it's an interesting one. It really is. Um, I've gone two one as well, um, but can Middlesbrough? convert these chances into goals like has latte laugh turned a corner i guess we'll see um but i still think norwich uh you know a tough nut to crack and you know i, I wouldn't even call it a wobble because they haven't lost in six games no, so <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think it's that bad no it's no. not a wobble it really isn't a wobble um i'd say yeah, west brom are I having mean, a wobble this is not a wobble yeah Exactly. I mean, the championships were very tight, really, hasn't it? I mean, last season was was the one-off where you had teams like Leicester for most of the season, Ipswich for most of the season, Leeds and Southampton for most of the season, just winning every single game convincingly. That's the that's the anomaly, not this. This is the normal teams winning 5-0 one week and losing 2-0 the next. That's the normal championship as we know and love, right? <laughs> love the championship for that yeah. it, it's just it's so unpredictable it's so glorious um like cardiff whacking someone five <laughs> mil ah, i love it mm. like cardiff who are just abs who have been terrible and then spank someone five nil and then just go on a on a run that that's what that's what i'm here for i love it but mark it's now time for your lock of the week who are you going for uh, I'm going to try and mix it up a little bit because I feel like I'm going for Burnley like every week at the moment. I can't <laughs> see past Sheffield United at home. Sheffield United to beat Stoke City at home. Interesting. Right, I'm going for Derby. I'm backing Derby yes. against Hull. It's tight 1-0. I've noticed I've done a lot of 1-0s this week. Not very exciting, but I've, <laughs> and I've also gone for a lot of home wins as well. <laughs> yeah. The only two teams I've backed away are Leeds and Luton. Uh-oh. Not great. Let's <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Yeah. Oh, but anyway, that's us done for this week. If you've enjoyed this, why not subscribe for even more championship content? We, we do a weekly roundtable at the pub where we discuss all the games in the championship from that game week. And whoever you support, we hope you all have a great day and a great rest of the week.